The next up is a hypnotherapist, pranic uh, quantum energy healer, and owner of Bay Area Meditation, so you probably already know who this is, who dedicates herself to helping people deconstruct the commonly held dogma of the human genetic timeline, historical record, and the human biostructure. Today, she's going to be educating us on the light topic of engineering of the organic creation of infinity. So I'm so pleased to welcome uh, my illustrious co-host, Geraldine Orozco. Hello. Thank you so much for that wonderful, wonderful uh, in, in welcome. Uh, well, I'm really excited to get started. And uh, let me pull up my little presentation. Yeah, let's do this. Uh, okay, I'll run things so you don't have to worry about that in the background. Okay. And, and go and enjoy. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. So let's get started. I am going to um, go ahead and go into my presentation mode here. So today we are going to talk about a really, really uh, important topic. I am a hypnotherapist and um, I have uh, studied and researched so much about the energetic body, not just from the perspective of uh, having read, uh, read about it and studied pranic quantum energy healing, um, and through my own uh, deprogramming of information, but um, through many different life-changing experiences throughout my life, I actually, um, in 2013, had a life-changing interdimensional contact that resulted in the activation of psychic abilities. And these psychic abilities really allowed me to kind of dive into the multidimensional body from a much more, a more profound perspective of looking at what is inside of this incre incredible divine construct of energy and consciousness. And I began to know Notice how this multidimensional body interacts with the world around us, looking at how information is being stored. And as I had these incredible experiences, it really dove me diving deeper into the question of DNA, of our genetics. In this contact experience, I was introduced to hybrid children. And my question at that point, going through all of this deprogramming process of entering into a zero point, was what is it that makes humans so unique, so special, that we participate in some of these incredible life experiences? And I began to take a look at DNA, our genetic origin. I began to let, take a look at what it is that all these organisms beyond their physical manifestation have in common. And one of the things that I uh, found was that our genetic code for all organisms is actually the same. We have the same both base genetic code from which we are evolving. And from, from that perspective, it can be expressed by many different organisms. In other words, to me, what this helped me understand is that we are really one race. We really do have one base blueprint to our creation, whether you are a, a organism that is a plant, whether you are a, a living animal, a species, and uh, some kind of bioorganism, we all stem from that origin point. And this was very interesting to understand because when you begin to look at our reality from the eyes of separation or this, uh, the idea that we are experiencing um, a dualistic uh, experience, we begin to realize that we actually are way more interconnected on a biological level, chemical, energetic level than we believe. And what that helps us understand as we go deeper into the, the roots of our origins is that perhaps we have not or uh, descended directly from the apes. Perhaps we are much more connected to a much higher intelligence. Just looking at the genetic code from the moment that we are connected to our ancestors and the apes, we actually, our code is way more complex than just what we hear. In fact, the the jump, the genetic jump between our DNA code from an ape or an orangutan to a human species is actually uh, quite large in that 
there is no way that the evolutionary jump could have been made in such a way that we embody such incredible consciousness and uh, intelligence within this organism. And so if we look back at our traces, we look at the origins of life on this planet, seeding on this planet. And there are many, many ancient texts throughout history, including uh, the Book of Enoch, uh, the Emerald Tablets, and many, many other kind of texts around the world that discuss the life forms that have originated, how we have come together with this incredible intelligence and our genetic make perhaps was genetically modified in order to create the organism that we are today. If we look around the different parts of the world, we see traces of these um, incredible origins of these consciousness. And we also take a look at an idea, a way to look at the origin of life forms on this planet from the creation of the universe to Sophia, to Yaldaba, to the Archons, and to many, many bloodlines in which we are. So, we really are so incredibly interconnected with all of these organisms in the universe and the designs, there are certain patterns that continue to present themselves. Not only do we have the same base code, but in fact, down to the fractal cellular level, we have patterns within our genetic make, within our physical body that are present in all things from the cells in your eye in to the galaxies and nebulas, certain patterns of self-similar information is available to us. So we are constructed in such a manner that we are designed to perfection. So we can't say that something has just appeared or evolved. We are actually a part of these incredible, complex, interdependent systems that for, for require one another in order to uh, in, in order to continue living in order to thrive in order to grow ultimately we are a fractal this human body is a fractal down to the cellular molecular level we are demonstrating these incredible patterns of self similarities but when you take this out to the bigger picture and you look out at this entire organic creation that we are on planet earth and even beyond we begin to look at another kind of pattern is the movement of this information the movement of this self similar information which which seems and and is uh, is shown and i will show you in just a minute to move in kind of a spiral movement not only is the entire universe moving in a spiral but all of our cells all of our organism down to the cellular level of the physical body and all organisms as well operate in this same way so there is an inevitable evolutionary process that we are a part of that we partake in collectively and this is something that's really important because it really helps us understand how we are moving and navigating, in fact, this multiverse that we are living in. Uh, as you can see, this entire universe, this galaxy, has its origin point from a source of life force. This life force which feeds this life into all living organisms, into all structures of reality and consciousness. We are also mimicking that within our physical body. And what we want to reach is that single middle point of singularity. We see this in the universe through white holes and black holes, how information is either contractive or expansive. This kind of dynamic, this kind of expression of energy, this movement of energy is self-similar in all of these organisms. And the human body is not different. The human body operates in the exact same way, not just the human body, but the human experience. In fact, every single organism is oscillating to create these vibrational frequencies. And each one of these vibrational frequencies is a timeline. It's a dimension. All organisms are creating and emanating these incredible dimensional planes. These dimensional planes are made up of information, just like an engine that oscillates to create life force and power to, to power uh, movement. The human body oscillates in the exact same way. The earth has its own toroidal field creating the Van Halen belts. 
and it creates a spherical shape. When you look at the entire space of the Earth, not only is it hollow from within, allowing this toroidal movement through its body, but in the physical form, we also contain that exact same movement. And in the universe, we also contain that exact same movement. So we are all interconnecting through this oscillation, providing a network of information that is produced around each organism. And this has been proven down to the molecular level of the body. In fact, DNA, this is a picture here on the bottom uh, left of an, the oscillation of a DNA of a cell that is actually creating a toroidal field, a magnetic field that emanates. And through that magnetic field, there are forms and structures that create a network of information. And through quantum non-locality, the opportunity in communicating and interacting with all of its surrounding organisms is available. In fact, the human body is in an incredibly complex network of this same communication. Now, this is incredibly important to understand because how this information moves depends very much on the vibrational frequency that each one of these cells, that each one of these organisms is uh, basically collectively emanating. Radio waves and sound waves and infrared waves, how this information, this vibrational frequency moves, whether the wave is wide, long and heavy, or short, fast, high, will determine how it travels through its space, through time and space. And this is both the physical body and this is larger organisms, planets, all have this vibrational frequency that is being emanated. And so it defines the organism, it defines the language that the organism is speaking. So, for example, these longer, heavier waves is, for example, fear. It's a very slow, long wave. And it activates very few of our DNA. And I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. Because our DNA is actually an incredible system of antennas. It's a receiver and it emanates an information. Love is a shorter wave. It's a faster vibrational frequency. So it defines how it moves, how it navigates through time and space. Any organism that is resonating at that vibrational frequency, it will be emanating in that way. And we have this incredible design, this self-similar design that we see in organisms universally. We also have them within the physical body. In fact, every single one of the organs is operating at a certain vibrational frequency. Information organizes itself in a, such a beautifully complex manner through each one of the endocrine system centers. The endocrine system centers are designed to produce certain chemicals, and those chemicals translate into information that is introduced into each one of the organs of the physical body. So if we take that to the next step, what does this massive amount of information then say about us? Are you an organic storage system? In fact, right now in the Silicon Valley here in San Francisco, we have many companies that are utilizing and mimicking DNA for storage. In one tablespoon of DNA, you can fit the entire world history the entire world history. So the question is, what are we holding within this organic system of information? How much information do we have? We believe that our life is 100 years, let's say, give or take 100 years of a lifespan that we have, and we are constantly absorbing and experiencing things that are storing within the multidimensional body. Well, they were able to translate that information by turning it into binary code from the nucleotide, uh, nucleobase code into this binary code, we were able to translate. But this is no more than vibrational frequency equally. The same way that we can translate this into a binary code, we are utilizing codes to read information that otherwise we would not have access to. And our multidimensional body, our complex body, has the exact same way of reading. Um, our system, in fact, is holographic in that the way that we are co-creating our reality is very much a holographic expression. 
And the cerebral cortex and the entire brain is actually superfluous to the network of information that is being run through the system. So the storage system, in other words, is not just uh, this, this code. It's actually not allocated in one or another part of the body. It is an entire network of storage of information, which means that the information is holographic. It, there was an, a test done with little mice where they removed parts of the brain. And despite removing parts of the brain, the little mice were still able to go down these paths, these mazes. They still remembered how to do it. So we're not storing that information in just the brain. It is actually storing through muscle memory, through movement, through sound, through emotions, through reactions, interactions that an organism is having. And this is incredibly important because what does that say about our human bodies then? If we have some of these biological answers, we can look deeper into biophysics for our model. DNA functions in a way that correlates with holographic projection. DNA projects a blueprint for the organism that is translated from the electrodynamic to the molecular level. When we look at this DNA more like a biocomputer, it reads and writes this genetic code, which means that it is translating its environment into information, into data. So the amount of information that we withhold in the body, aside from general uh, epigenetics, goes farther than just our current environment. It goes into our lineages. It goes into our ancestry. And our ancestral information is actually passing down. In fact, there were studies that were done with mice that they would create traumatic situations for them and test generations down, whether the next three generations down would remember or respond to those traumatic uh, experiences in the same way. And in fact, they did. They discovered that the, the offspring of these mice were responding, already having that learned reaction to these traumatic events. So really what that means is that our organism is this incredible intelligence of storage of information. So when we experience traumatic experiences in our life, we are really storing within the body everything that our mother has gone through, our father has gone through, and so on and so forth. And the way that information is passed down is through the mitochondrial DNA, which in fact is a snapshot of all of the ancestors from before. So this is encoded in our design. It is in your body that you have a snapshot, literally, of the universe, the universal history, just like a tree, just like the rings of a tree that absorbs the information of the entire uh, current natural state of its environment. We are also storing that information in the organs, in the skins, in all of the systems of this multidimensional body. And what that means is that memories that are even uh, uh, non-physical, emotional memories, vibrational memories are also being stored. Like, for example, when I had my conscious contact experience in 2013, and I was interacting with these interdimensional beings, all of a sudden I began to recall contact experience. I began to remember that I had been a participant in some of these hybridization programs. And with the people that I work with every day, these uh, experiencers that also have had contact experience are are recalling their memories when they reach a certain level of awareness, when certain aspects of the activation of DNA, that genetic code, that genetic code that remember when it's in a state of fear, when the wavelength of vibrational frequency of the body is slower and longer, it activates lesser of that DNA. And in fact, when we are in a state of love and expression, we activate much more of that DNA. So we have the capacity of accessing fragments of ourselves that are encoded in more than just this physical body. Our multidimensional body, as a result of that contact experience, allowed me to look at the multidimensional body in such a complex way where I could see the chakra systems, 
And each one of these chakras, what I saw is again, another self similar model to these incredible white holes and black holes that we have in the universe. We are literally made up of these black and white holes. Your physical body, the chakra system, the front and back of the chakras that go all along your spine and the main organs of the body function like black and white holes. They create these centrifugal vortexes, vortices that either contract life force or expand life force. And this is important to understand because as soon as we understand how the physical body moves with information in, in its organism, we begin to understand why certain things are coming out of balance, why we end up with illnesses, why we have collective trauma that we can't seem to get over. All of this information is stored. And when there is a lack of awareness, when there is the application of the lower vibrational frequencies, when we are tapping into fear based ideology, we completely move away from the expansion and function, movement, fluid movement of this body. In hypnotherapy, working with my clients daily, we begin to unlock memories, not only of this current lifetime, but other lifetimes. And I don't like to use the word past lifetimes because all of these memories are actually accessible to us simultaneously in this moment. And when my clients begin to access that information, they begin to notice, again, patterns, patterns in these experiences, patterns in the traumas, patterns in the memories. So what I discovered through my early journey and uh, early, early uh, in 2008, when I began to really dive deep into this meditation practices, I discovered that I wasn't finding those answers outside. The only place that I was able to find any answers at all was within. And I realized that my ideas of our society, of life, of love, were completely inverted. Why were they inverted? Why was our understanding of what love was, the concept of self-love, was so foreign when it's something incredibly important to the human organism? It's not something that's taught in school or not something that uh, we're educated on. But... What I noticed is that when I began to go back to those memories and heal, reintegrate, which means that in those memories begin to change the perspective that I had in those experiences to a broader perspective, it changed the vibrational frequency of that memory from a constrict con constrictive energy into a more expansive flow. And when that occurs, these fragments were reintegrating into the body providing healing, providing integration. I realized that all of the stagnant disruption that was in the multidimensional body was something that was created throughout the entire life. It wasn't something that was just occurring through one or, or another traumatic experience. It was every day, it was every moment that the body had been storing memories. Any moment that I felt helpless, any moment that the human begins to feel fearful, we are creating fragmentation down to the cellular level of the multidimensional body, and it affects the function and life force and flow of healing. It affects the ability, the creative life forces that the human body has. In fact, all of these attachments, these thought forms that were stagnant within the multidimensional body were causing heavier and heavier and heavier emanation of vibrational expression. So my wavelengths were really low at that time. And when I work with my clients and I begin to tap into this multidimensional body, you can clearly see when there is a stagnation of energy. The organism is becoming self-destructive. That consciousness is disconnected from its higher source, from its origin point, from that whole connectedness to the all. And we see that in the universe, the organic universe, as it expresses itself from its origin, any aspects of itself that become ill, that become parasitic, that become unconscious, begin to uh, embody self-destructive behavior. The human body functions in the exact same way. Our structures of reality, in fact, are so complex that what you're seeing here is a picture of what you look like.
You are at the center of creation. And at that same time, you have access to all of your past lives, all, all of your uh, interdimensional fragments. All of this information is available because it's self-similar. We are repeating over and over again, experiencing from the ranges of vibrational frequency, all of this potential expression of creation that we have. And we have access to all of that through our body. The, organ the way that this information is organized in the multidimensional body is actually from the lowest vibrational frequency up to the highest level. And our lower aspect of our body is navigating the physical plane. The physical plane is the one that interacts with its physical environment. It's the one that is storing the physical experiences. The higher levels from the heart up are navigating the higher realms, dream times, lucid dreaming, Akashic records, all of these uh, when we're astral projecting. We are, we are also storing information from those dimensional levels as well. So if we're constantly storing information, whether we're conscious or not, the consciousness is what defines the kind of experience that we're having and how we are either aware of this organism in its totality, in its expressions, even if it's movements of that white black hole energy, either we're contractive, we become this centrifugal energy that is moving in the opposite direction, which means that it's contractive. Or it's expanding by moving itself in a spiral, ascending mode. The entire human organism has the ability of moving in that direction. And what happens when we go the other way is that our life force becomes inverted. We become disconnected and unaware of our connection to that source. Ultimately, we become basically artificial intelligence. In fact, what makes us unique what makes us different from artificial intelligence and, and pure consciousness is that awareness. If you go into these mechanical movements of behavior, I began to notice that I had certain uh, desires. I had certain feelings, certain cravings for things, certain uh, needs for emotions. Why do we have this? It's a, it's a profound programming that is done at a very early age. From the moment that we're born, we are absorbing everything around us and we are being programmed by other people's behaviors, our families, friends, religion, culture. Everything is designing and showing us what we should be, what we should embody. Unfortunately, a lot of these systems are directed with a certain thing in mind. In fact, I noticed the similarity between the marketing chart of emotional triggers and how to market products to certain areas, to certain sectors based on their color, based on their marketing and their design. Why does this emotional trigger of colors work? Because color is vibrational frequency. It's information. And who was the father of implementing these kinds of systems into our society was actually Edward Bernays. Edward Bernays was the nephew of Freud. And so what happened is that he is actually the one that introduced this understanding, a very profound understanding of how our deepest unconscious, subconscious desires interact with our environment in such a powerful way that you can invert someone's needs. And by simply placing in front of them uh, a picture of something that feeds to an emotion that's linked to that object, to that, um, you know, to that whatever product is being sold, it can make you want that. So I began to question, well, who am I then? Am I a product of all these desires? Or who is the real self? Who is the real self? So if you take a look and kind of question what tr what these what pictures trigger what do they trigger in you that is an incredibly complex understanding of who you are which our environment understands deeply so here we are today in a in a, in a world in which the majority of our choices are directed through these emotional impulses, through the manipulations of these impulses, then when we look at the bigger picture, a lot of these systems are interconnected to one another. In fact, did you know that 147 companies own all of the companies in this world? 
So who is who is engineering our reality? Are we really engineering our reality or are we feeding into these systems of creation? Well, let's take that out of the picture now. Let's go even bigger, broader into the universe. In the universe, another another self-similar pattern is as an organism, we are also being influenced by celestial bodies. We are being influenced by life force energy, the movements of planets, the movements of energy in the universe, and they organize itself, that information organize itself in what we know as astrological science, for example. The moment that we are born on this planet has a snapshot of the universe at that time. It tells us the energies, vibrational emotions that are available at that time. And it oftentimes influences our entire life. Just the way that the moon influences ourselves, our cycles. So when we take a look at that then, who is the creator? Is the human the creator? Or are we these mechanical responses? Have we turned into artificial intelligence in which our awareness of these mechanisms of the universe is so disconnected from the core of ourselves? We are this center point. We are these vortexes of black and white light. And as an expression of this dualistic creative life force, our connection to source, our connection to that true divine blueprint of creation beyond all of these uh, systems of influence is who we are. And in order to reach that, awareness and consciousness, the embodiment, the understanding, the education of your system, your complex multidimensional storage system of information is necessary. As we embody in our physical bodies all of these incredible aspects to the universe, fragments of ourselves, we can access information in this lifetime of patterns, all the traumas that we've had in this lifetime that cause disconnect, that cause pain, suffering are repeated through our ancestral lineage. And we have the ability of healing them by meditating on them, accessing their root, and reintegrating fragments of ourselves that were created from them. As organisms of infinite consciousness, we become more and more fragmented in this universe through suffering and trauma. And how we can change this, how we can begin to heal that, is by beginning to train your intuition through meditation, through sitting with yourself in meditation and becoming aware of your multidimensional body, you begin to notice that in the spinal cord of the body is actually the root in which all of this mass information is stored. So our attachments, our fears, our anxieties that are stuck, we create them because we are the center creation of that holographic reality. All parasitic consciousness is a rejection of its own self. If we're embodying that kind of parasitic consciousness, we are feeding in to untruths, lies of our reality. What creates balance and life, what creates vitality and healing, we look at the, the science of bliss. When the human body, literally the prefrontal cortex uh, that is responsible for this incredible complex system. It, it's the one that helps you evaluate these decisions. So the prefrontal cortex, this part of the brain is loaded with opiate receptors. So structurally, our most sophisticated reasoning is linked to bliss. So when our entire structure of reality is playing and manipulating on that bliss, it's the, the uh, fabricated aspect of ourself that wants to enjoy, that wants to, ex ex uh, uh, you know, be loved. This is something that we need to change. Real true love is embodied in the physical body when we come in to this integrative balance. When we embody complete acceptance of this body, everything that we are, everything that we're expressed, we can then enter into that zero point, into that singularity, that point in which we are neutral. We are that neutral observation of creation. And this is where we begin to play into the laws of the universe in which we come into these self-similar patterns, these cycles of creation that we are emitting, that we are embodying. We are this incredible infinity of creation. 
the human body through its awareness, through its connection to itself, has the ability to create and manifest anything that it requires in order to thrive. And so one of the things that I'd love to share with you today uh, is to understand that through that connection to the body and intuition, when you activate the heart, the throat, the third eye, you begin to tap into those higher dimensions that pull you away from the hypnosis of the physical uh, stimulations, the triggered emotions that are coming from the lower sensations and the bodies. Oftentimes we are deeply, deeply addicted to these sensations. Work with that addiction. And what you'll find is that at the core of that addiction is an incredible uh, trauma that has occurred at some time. There is a child that is fragmented, that has experienced all of these things. And you will begin to unlock the memories that surround those experiences at that time. In order to begin to train yourself and your multidimensional body in this activation, you must learn how to work with training in these chakras. The first three chakras are often wide open, completely uh, out of control. They are completely enlaced and interconnected with your environment, which causes emotions to be triggered, feelings, sensations. You can control these centers by beginning to learn how to open and close them, by clearing them, cleaning out all of that trauma from the past, all of those emotions to bring them back into a neutral state through meditation, through that single singularity of that zero point and opening the heart, the throat and the third eye. As these incredible complex beings, the more that we activate our intuition, the more we can navigate our environment with discernment with free will, with clarity, and understanding that our environment is actually a projection of our core beliefs. It is a projection of all the thought forms that originate in everything that you are encoded at the core of your body. So you are literally this fractal of infinite consciousness interconnected to one another. We are all one in such a profound way that Everyone that we interconnect with is a mirror of ourselves, of our deepest fears, and also our most expansive desires, loves, creations. So if we navigate the world in a way that is compassionate and aware, we begin to create from a level that is even more advanced. From the ancients up until now, one of the technologies that's the most advanced in our universe is the human body. It is that consciousness. It is the awareness that provides this life force connection. You are that prima materia. You are that core creation. So begin to connect the physical body, connect to source, become aware of that connection to source and embody this neutrality at the center of this uh, positive, negative experience that when it unites, it can now create. That is what you are and what you're here to do. So as you expand, expand and become this centrifugal life force, even death, even when you leave the physical body, you will begin to enter into a productive expression of life force. And this is something that has been trained for centuries in history and something that we can train today as the alpha and the omega. Well, what have we learned today? We need to raise our vibrational frequency by understanding how frequency patterns and wavelengths move. It's not just a matter of saying I need to be happy. It is a deep, profound, deep programming and reintegration of fragmentation in order to make you whole again. Right now, we are not whole. We are these fragments everywhere. So when we become whole, we begin to create generation for creation, love is the generation for creation, the embodiment of that wavelength is healing. The more that we connect to our source, the more that we are aware of that connection, that we are more than one just physical organism, we can produce this incredible disconnect from parasitic consciousness, which are just mirrors of our own disconnect of ourselves. So uh, I really hope that this uh, has helped you today. And if you would like to check out a couple documentaries and, and series that I have been in on the topic of interdimensional contact or to work with me, you can definitely reach out at um, any of these uh, uh, systems, either through uh, hypnotherapy or DNA reprogramming. I'm very happy to work with you. And I'll go ahead and open um the floor for uh any questions or anything else see 
Yeah, I'm looking through and I'm not seeing any. They're mostly just telling you how amazing you are, okay. uh, which which is wonderful to hear, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, um, that's great. So I I'll I finished my presentation a little bit early for those questions, um, but if we don't have any questions, then we can just move on. Well, let's give them a second here. Yeah. People saying that they would love to connect with you, that they're going to be getting in touch with you. Yeah, that's amazing. I can't wait to work with you. Please do reach out. My website is GeraldineRosco.com. And you can also join our support group for experiencers and contactees. So it'd be great to connect with you. Here we go. I think we got it. There you go. Here's a question for you. Do you know of how to reprogram DNA for physical healing? So uh, any kind of illness is a result uh is a manifestation of stagnant life force within the body. So we can begin to help the body rebalance itself by addressing the root cause of that stagnant information within the body and begin to release the memories and the emotions that are stagnant in the body. And what that'll do is it begins to reverse all of the things that have been coming out of balance in the body and create a stable environment emotionally. Emotions are the very, very most important thing because when emotions are out of balance, it's a chemical reaction that begins to create inflammation in the body. If we're un in a state of fear and we're in a state of anxiety, that inflammation takes the body out of balance completely. And so we uh, allow ourselves to no longer come into that inflammatory, uh, you know, uh, response to our world, we begin to heal, heal the body, bringing yourself in meditation into a state of neutrality as much as possible, state of observation. The only way we're going to reach that neutrality is by beginning to heal the fragments, the trauma that has occurred since childhood, and that therefore heals the body. So this is something that we do in my DNA reprogramming sessions, and many people have been able to really move away from traumatic experiences health-wise in order to... Um, uh, you know, no longer have to take uh, medications or trying to wean off some of these chemical uh, things that cause imbalance within the body. So, yeah. All right. Well, there are some more questions, but I think you're out of time. So I'm going to go ahead and step away and let you introduce our next speaker. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.